All right, uh, we're back. Episode two. Um, today we're gonna be covering compound assignment, uh, Lua arithmetic operators, and then compound operators, which are added. They're part of Roblox by Luau. They're not in native Lua. Um, so you will be able to use those when you're making a Roblox game. Uh, just to quickly, briefly touch on last time, not gonna spend a ton of time on it. Also wanted to say thank you for the support on the last video. Um, means a lot to me and uh, I, you know, I read all the comments and stuff. One guy in computer science looking to make a game on Roblox. Um, and one guy saying he's like an intermediate scripter. Jeff Day basically left a comment just calling me bald, which is funny. Um, and uh, yeah, just kind of going on from here, but thank you for that. Um, so, right, quickly, just very quickly to go over what we went through last time. I'm not going to go over getting Roblox Studio set up, not going to go over putting a script into uh, Explorer over in server script service here, right? What we went over last time, input, output, operation, do something, get something in return. You control the middleman step of that. Uh, and then we went over RAM, random access memory, part of your computer, right? It's storage, it's one of the two applicable resources available to you as a programmer. The other one being CPU time and processing time. Um, <clears throat> and then we went over identifiers and creation of a variable, right? Creation of a variable on Roblox with Luau looks like this. Local variable name equals five, right? So this just means uh, that anywhere in our program where we see variable name, it really means five. Okay, good, cool. All right, um, we're gonna dive into, if, if you're confused on this, just watch the first video first. Should make a lot more sense. Um, we're gonna go ahead and, and move on here. Um, so what we're talking about today is arithmetic operators. So, what does that mean? We say arithmetic because there's also something called logical operators, uh, and then these are not necessarily something I'm planning to talk about today, um, just because they kind of dive towards a direction of code that I'm not really ready to move to yet. I'm really trying to keep these in digestible bites. So, uh, no pun intended. Um, we're talking about arithmetic operators today. In Lua, the arithmetic operators available to you are gonna be plus, minus, multiply, divide, and then the modulus operator. The modulus operator, um, unless you're in computer science or you know another language or you program, um, is gonna be a little confusing to you potentially. I'm gonna go over what it is. Uh, if it confuses you, I recommend looking it up. I might throw a link or two in the description about it, um, but but it's also worth understanding that the modulus operator, as powerful as it is, is a very um, is a very unique situation to even need it. You aren't going to use it as frequently as you use the other ones, most likely. So, for all intents and purposes, if the modulus compu um, operator confuses you at all, not a huge deal. Um, it's just available in the language, so I'd like to cover. Right. So, let's first do this, right? Um, from last time, we're going to create two variables, right? First one, we're gonna do first number equals four. This means that anywhere in our program we see first number, it means four. Now, we're gonna create another one. Second number equals two. Anywhere in our program we see second number, two, right? So, how does an arithmetic operator come into play? Well, as an example, let's say that we want to create something called third number. And third number is not going to be typed explicitly. It's going to be the result of first number and second number, right? So that would look like this. And let me slow down for a second, right? Local third number equals first number plus second number. This works because first number represents four, second number represents two. Remember, anywhere in our program that we see those identifiers, they represent something else, right? First number, it represents four. Second number represents two. Together equals six. 
So this statement is just to say that this variable, local third number, equals six, okay? Now that we've gone over that, um, we're gonna kind of roll through the next few here. Subtraction operator, um, you know, of course, four minus two is gonna be two. So local third number equals two. And we have the multiplication operator four times two is going to be eight. Local third number equals eight. Again, first number is four, second number is two. Uh, four times two is eight. Then we have the division operator like this. First number divided by second number, the result will be two. Four divided by two is two. Um, local third number equals two. Now we get what's known as the modulus operator. What is that, right? Well, in layman's terms, the modulus operator is to basically purport the remainder of something, right? Um, so if we did four divided by two, that's basically what we're saying here, four divided by two, the modulus operator purports the remainder. So first number divided by second number, Four divided by two will be two. Remainder is zero. There is no decimal, right? So if we go ahead and remember we went over print last time, I think we'll just use that again. We're going to print third number here. Come up here, run our program zero because the remainder is zero, right? Um, now, what about if, what about if, uh, let's see, what if first number instead was five, right? And then we run it. Well, you see the remainder is one. Why is that? We're gonna open up paint.net again real quick. Remainder here is one and here is why. So we have, we're just saying, um, we have the, the, the first number as five. We're just gonna, in here, we're gonna say Fn is five. We have second number is two. And so the math looks like this. Five divided by two comes out as two whole numbers, right? because you can take away two twice. Four divided by two is, is going to be two. We already went over this, but four modulus two is going to be zero, as we saw, um, which means there's no, there is no leftover number. So what is left over when you try to take away two again? What is the difference? What is still there uh, that doesn't fit into another set of two. Well, that's one, right? We see one right here because we have two sets of two and then we have one left over. We can't do two again. Make sense? Kind of. Again, I'm gonna leak some resources about it in the description because um, I do understand it can be a little interesting to wrap your head around. Even I have to sit there and think about it sometimes because I just use it so infrequently. But you're also probably thinking like, why is that useful? Um, well, it can be useful to find out if a number is odd or even. Uh, it can be useful for creating maybe something like chunks where you want to figure out where like sections end and start at. There's actually a video on my channel where I do something like that. Um, there's very kinds of, of, of interesting uses for it. And as you continue to create more programs, you're likely to run into situations where you may need this as the simplest solution. So that's what that is and um yeah i think that's that covers that um close this out back in our program here right we're gonna come out of run mode so we've gone over the arithmetic operators addition subtraction multiplication division uh modulus modulator whatever whatever you want to call it but generally you're gonna see it called the modulus operator modulo um <clears throat> so what else are we covering today everything that we've covered so far 
is in native Lua. You can go to Lua.org, go to their demo, and type out any of the code we've done so far. It'll run perfectly fine because it's native Lua. Okay. Luau is Roblox's derivative Lua language um, that has a good number of differences in it. A lot of it is the same. Um, a lot of it can run in vanilla Lua. However, there are differences, one of those being compound operators, compound arithmetic. What does that mean? Compound arithmetic is basically just a shortened form of saying something else. So if we wanted to do, let's say here that we wanted to increment second number by two in native Lua, how do you think we do that? second number equals second number plus two. We don't need the local here. We will go over it in a future video. Um, what this is doing is redefining what second number represents. So second number represents what it currently is plus two. So it now represents four at this point in the code. Okay. What is compound operation? Compound operation is specifically for an instance like this where all you're doing is incrementing or decrementing or doing arithmetic in some way. Um, it allows you not to type out the uh, second instance of, this, of the identifier here, right? So it looks, looks like this. Looks like this. And this does the exact, there is literally no difference between the two. Exactly the same, okay? Second number still equals four here at this point in the code. We've just wrote a shortened version of it. It's also going to be available with division. It's also going to be available with multiplication. Um, it's also available with, of course, division. And then I believe it's also available with modulus. Yeah, so you can do it with modulus as well. Um, which is which is great so available for everything um, and that's what that is <laughs> so yes compound assignment very powerful um, and definitely a time saver as well let's get into the final thing I'd like to talk about today um, this one shouldn't take super long we're talking about compound um, assignment now what we've done here is used a compound operator Okay, and I may have said compound assignment at some point in there. This is known as compound operation, okay? What I'd like to talk about here is compound assignment. I'm gonna type it out, then we'll go over what it means, right? So, compound assignment looks like this. Compound assignment. So, you probably already take a guess what it means. Um, especially because Lua does not have types in it. All, all of it is just um, weekly type data and um, you know it's dynamic. So we can do a bunch of assignments in a row without any worry about uh, anything else. Uh, and it's actually very great at allowing you to do that. Uh, first number comma second number equals two comma four. This is, or I guess it's uh, I guess it's four, two. This is exactly the same thing that we had before, wrote in a shortened form. Make sense? Um, it's just combined together. And we could even do, we can get more complicated than that, right? And do a third one. And that third one might involve an arithmetic operator. Um, one thing to note though, is that until you have actually fully declared something you cannot use it in arithmetic operations so if i tried here to type first number plus two you're going to see that it doesn't like that because first number doesn't represent anything yet the line hasn't run the line of code isn't completed first number does not yet represent four we would have to declare a third number on a separate line which is one of those instances where you're like well if it's so powerful why wouldn't you use it for everything probably because a lot of the time the stuff that you want to use in it you would be declaring on similar lines so um but definitely great. Um, you're gonna see it used in a couple other ways as we go. Um, but you know, something like this, two plus two is allowed. First number here represents four, second number equal, uh, represents two, 
Uh, third number represents two plus two represents four. Um, and so, yeah, um, that kind of goes over the stuff that I think I'd like to go over today. Next time, I'm thinking we're going to start moving a little bit towards control flow, um, some keywords, and trying to dive a little deeper into actual code. These two videos have been a bit to get some of the um, lecture-like stuff out of the way because, uh, you know, you need to know how this stuff works in order to get into, get into the more functional stuff. Um, but hopefully I've done a good job explaining it. Um, I'm going to throw in the description a couple of links for Modulus and then um, be sure as well to uh, get yourself in Roblox Studio. If you've just been watching these, it's always great to get around and, and kind of just try and make something for yourself. So, um, yeah, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. I'm thinking I'm going to end up probably... By the end of this week, I'll go ahead and, and get episode three going. 